experience, her leadership, and her vision, and her commitment both to athletic excellence and to the success of student athletes, both on and off the field, make her the ideal candidate to lead the Scarlet Knights during the pivotal years ahead. I also want to thank all the members of the search committee, particularly the co-chairs Dick Edwards and Kate Sweeney, who ensured that this process was thorough and that we made the best possible hire for Rutgers as we prepare to move into the Big Ten next year. Now, it's a particular privilege to welcome Julie Herman to the Rutgers community. Julie is quite simply a remarkable leader, and she is precisely the person we need to continue to build and strengthen Rutgers athletics. For the past 15 years, she has been second in command within the University of Louisville <coughs> Athletic Department, overseeing more than 20 sport programs, student development, fundraising, academic support, marketing, sports, medicine, strength, conditioning, you get the idea. It's no coincidence that during that time, the athletic programs at Louisville have enjoyed a meteoric rise through the Division I ranks. Indeed, Julie worked tirelessly with athletic director Tom Urich to resurrect the once troubled Louisville program uh, and raise it to the level of prestige it enjoys today. Just this past year, the Louisville football program defeated number four Florida in the Sugar Bowl. The women's basketball team reached the national championship game, and the men's basketball team won the national championship. Julie is a proven fundraiser and has created many revenue generating opportunities for Louisville during her tenure there. Uh, and she was more importantly instrumental in moving Louisville from the Conference USA to the Big East and now from the Big East to the Atlantic Coast Conference. And her experience in guiding that program to conference realignment is critically important to us as Rutgers prepares to move into the Big Ten. Julie is one of the most respected athletics administrators in the country, and throughout her career, she has always kept a clear focus on the development of the student athlete. She is passionate about ensuring that they have a well-rounded collegiate experience and she embraces our tradition of athletic excellence for our student athletes. Perhaps her crowning achievement at Louisville is the comprehensive health care program, which integrates all the elements that are critical to student athlete experience. Sports medicine, <coughs> sports performance, leadership training, academic support and tutoring, and career counseling. <coughs> this innovative program has created an atmosphere that not only attracts top coaches and top students, but also produces successful graduates. Now, when I met Julie, it was clear to me that she shares my perspectives on the key principles for Rutgers athletics that are required for going forward. Absolute integrity and transparency within the program and without, commitment to the university's core values, a deep concern for our student athletes, both in the classroom and on the playing field, a strong commitment to athletic excellence and clear and measurable progress towards creating budgetary self-sufficiency for Rutgers athletics. These are fundamental principles as far as I'm concerned, and with Julie's leadership, we will deliver on every one of them. As we enter the Big Ten and join the Committee on Institutional Cooperation, an academic consortium of world-class research institutions, and with the integration of UMD and J into Rutgers that will occur this July, Rutgers is poised to become a truly great comprehensive research public university. Julie Herman is going to provide steady leadership for our athletic department during this exciting period of transition. And I'm, I'm incredibly happy to formally announce her as the new director of intercollegiate athletics at Rutgers University. Julie?
fascinating to me, the men and women of Rutgers, that I was truly blown away, realizing who's here, how passionate they are, their sense of urgency uh, to, provide, to, provide, to provide opportunities for young people. And so uh, I, I too want to thank the 26 person committee that uh, provided the search for Dr. Barchi, and in particular uh, the executive committee, and also uh, Kate Sweeney and Dr. Edwards. They, first of all, had me at hello uh, when I met them, and uh, it's just been such a privilege to begin to meet the people that make up Rutgers because their passion for Rutgers and uh, sense of pride in what we will accomplish over the next five years and I hope well beyond. Uh, it's part of why I was so excited about the opportunity to come here and lead the team into the Big Ten, which is a phenomenal opportunity. It gives Rutgers an opportunity to soar uh, in a limitless way, in every way that we can dream. We have a ton of work to do, but I can't tell you how privileged I am to join this team and become team leader for what I believe is a fantastic athletic department. And to do it connected and on the hip of such an extraordinary academic institution and for the first time I've had the opportunity to be connected to this level of faculty. It was my privilege throughout this process to have a chance to meet at least a few of the deans and I was blown away uh, by their passion and their knowledge and their know-how and their capacity. And uh, so to be able to uh, continue to grow this athletic department alongside this academic commission with its values um, is a privilege I'll never forget and I will never take uh, for granted. And so I want to thank Dr. Barshi in particular for your courage, for giving me this opportunity. Um, it is a privilege. I'll never forget. I'm deeply affected by it and will be for all the days that I'm now a Scarlet Knight. So thank you, sir. And we'll go ahead and open it. Mind up to open it? More questions. Football commitment going forward to the Big Ten. 
since you'll be operating at uh, number one. Number one, Coach Flood um, has a huge test. We all have huge tests in front of us, but there's no doubt going to the eastern side of the Big Ten is tough on anybody, and it's a steep hill. But I trust Coach Flood. I think he's a fantastic coach. We will invest time, talent, and treasure in him. We do not need to spend what Michigan spends. I don't know how they spend all that money. We will do more with less, and that because that's what we've done at Louisville. A lot of people look at Louisville now and go, "Gosh, we've got 88 million dollars." That is not where we started. We started at 14 million dollars, and we just consistently found a way to take care of the most urgent matter at the time and be really, really smart stewards of the dollar that we have. And that's our commitment. Just as a follow-up to that, um, the, the since you're you're coming from the uh, a football program that had the lowest APR in the Big East, or the, the the highest one, did did winning in football come at too high a price at Louisville? In terms no, of because, academics? No, because when that happened, we weren't winning. <coughs> so, you know, unfortunately, that's the case of a coach letting go of 21 players for other separate reasons back in 2008 or 9. And so our APR now is 971, and the year before was 948, but at the average of the six year cohort is what put us in the to be used from really one class. That's how that happened. We welcome uh, George Falkowski from his 12, New Jersey. Certainly, uh, you've been very aware of what's been going on here these past uh, weeks and months. And I guess it's the same question we asked Eddie Jordan when he came in, too, is uh, what makes you the right person to take all this on at this time? What makes this opportunity not daunting, but a challenge that you want to accept? Well, I'm a builder at heart. Every opportunity I've ever had in business sports, which is now over 30 years, um, has entire, I've, all, I've never had any program that was built, not one time, not even as a student athlete. When we went to Nebraska, they had never been ranked, and we finished top five in the country, and Wyoming had never been ranked, and Georgia had never been ranked, and Tennessee had never been ranked, and you know, on and on. And for darn sure, Louisville had never, you know, Louisville was not there. So I'm a builder at heart, and part of my attraction for this opportunity is knowing that uh, many things are coming together. A fantastic academic institution, uh, you know, an athletic department with some some great tradition, and the opportunity in the Big Ten, which we will take advantage of to continue to position ourselves to get as competitive as possible in as many sports as we can. Steve you know, Pulley from Star Wars as well. Uh, it's probably recognized there's a deep divide here in Rutgers. A lot of people in the community still support your predecessor. Uh, I'm curious, what would you say to them to, to, to try to win them back, and what is your message or overall plan to, to start the healing process here? Well, I think that I've said many times, I think, to uh, when I was interviewing, that the healing process, to some extent, starts from the inside out. It starts with staff, it starts with our coaches. These are the people that were, were so deeply affected by what took place, because while they were not responsible, it splashed all over them. And so we're gonna get together as an athletic department inside this fantastic institution and come out with a message about who we are and how we stand and how we operate. And we'll take that message out to all of the people who care about Rutgers, including donors, and including donors that have been deeply hurt by this. I'm well aware that many people who support this institution were deeply hurt by what took place. And while I can't do anything to fix that, what I can do is go sit with them and share the mission vision of what we believe can happen in athletics, and we'll find out if they're still Rutgers people or if they, you know, if, if what else inspired them. But we'll definitely take an opportunity to visit with them. And, I, and I'll be on a listening tour. I'll be listening. Mike Peppers with WCTC Radio in uh, New Brunswick, home of Rutgers football for 70 years almost. Um, as far as the basketball goes, you talked you talk about the commitment to football and uh, the fundraising that you've had. One of the things that's kind of left on the table is the plan to expand and beautify the rack. Uh, what about any plans you might have for that or for where you have to, to get up to speed on, on, on that plan? Well, I have to get up to speed on almost everything, but I can't wait to see the progress on that, the continued conversation on it, and uh, really look forward to getting in there and seeing what we can do and how fast we can do it. What kind of commitment will there be to that? Very committed. I come from the Young Center. Very committed to all facilities and really nice basketball facilities. Hi, Julie. Ryan Dillian from New Jersey Press Media Newspaper. Could you just talk from your experience in Louisville? Can you just how you expect to handle coaches coaching over the last year of their contract, given the statement that exists with that and the public and in recruiting circles? What was the very last part? The stigma that exists about coaching, on, coaching in the last year of their contract in the public and in recruiting circles. How you expect to handle that? Well, I've been managing coaches for 16 years, every kind of possible coach. 
And it's my job to partner with every coach we have to figure out how to best facilitate their success. And that is 99% of what a good athletic director does. When we get to a point where it's not working, then that conversation will take place with that coach. Um, I'm not an ambush firing person. If it's not going well, it's not, no one's confused about that. Um, but I'll be partnering with them the way I did with the coaches at Louisville. Uh, yes, Mr. Brian Thompson from NBC New York. Could you address these, uh, this report from 1997 in Sports Illustrated talking about the incident you had with uh, your assistant coach, Ms. Hyman? Uh, they're alleging that, that there was a video in which you were caught saying, We don't want any surprises from February. It's hard to have a baby in the office. And then that she quoted you as saying, uh, you, you could be fired. And then she won $150,000 settlement. There's a video, I'm sorry, did you say there's a video? They referred to a video, a wedding video, in which you uh, may have said that. Okay. There's no video, trust me. But, um, um, you know, through the course of, I've been managing people for 25 years, and through the course of 25 years, um, hundreds of student athletes and co coaches, and unfortunately there's occasions in which some of those dialogues end up being litigated. And uh, it was litigated, while I do not agree with the outcome, it's already been litigated, and there's Really it did not happen though, uh, the way it happen. was described in the uh, article? I'm not familiar with the article you're talking about. I'm not familiar with what you read to me. Can I read it to you? Sure. Uh, specifically, uh, she, she was quoted in the article as uh, saying uh, in the timeline, does it mean it might come down to not having a baby or losing my job when talking about the pregnancy? And she quoted you as saying it might. Not clear that whatsoever. You don't remember that? No, sir. Thank you. I also got a quote where. Um, in one story where you talked about being satisfied as a number two, that that was a job that you enjoyed and could see doing for your career. So if you could just explain to us, you know, what changed? Was this opportunity, was it something in you? What changed? And why here, which is a job, not just number one job, but one that many perceive as right with challenge? Um, I, I have had until today the greatest job in sports, in college sports. Being number two for Tom Drew was an extraordinary privilege. And until an opportunity that had the ingredients of Rutgers, I had never been interested in this to see. Despite all the phone calls, and despite all the people encouraging me to do so, um, it was going to be a very specific fit that inspired me to step out of the greatest job in college sports. And based on uh, what I, as I said earlier, what I believe Rutgers is capable of in athletics, um, and the opportunity in the Big Ten, and our location, and everything that's wrapped around this unbelievable athletic department, um, it was an opportunity I didn't want to miss. I wanted to get in and compete, and uh, again, I'm really privileged to be here because of it. Anyone else? We're good. Oh, one more. Right here. Keith <laughs> Sarger from the Athletic Park Press. I don't know how much you want to talk about personal on you, but can you just talk about some of the obstacles you might have faced growing up? Um, adopted and uh, uh, who was your father at the age of 16? <laughs> well, I'm a really an incredibly blessed person. Um, one to be adopted, and uh, and I was adopted from birth, so I never knew that I wasn't adopted. And my older brother's adopted, and I'm adopted. My younger sister's are natural child, so when she used to bug us, she used to tell her that she was actually the adopted child. <laughs>
just will follow that up uh, well, but I'll change the subject. Um, can you talk a little bit about yeah, Can you yeah. talk a little bit about your familiarity with Rutgers? I mean, people talk about <coughs> being in Louisville and the athletic programs there across the board uh, having good success. What familiarity do you have working with all the different programs here at Rutgers, being members of a league for the last several years? Well, I was, uh, you know, had the pleasure of watching, you know, Rutgers compete against us for uh, eight years and watch their style, coaching styles. Um, for a living, I watch coaches, and so any team that comes to our campus, I know how good my coaches are and what they're doing and what they're about. I watch the other coaches, in part because you never know when you need to hire, and the hiring process doesn't start when your coach leaves you. Uh, you've always got to know who's, who's best in class out there, who's somebody, you love how they operate, you love how they interface with their team, and so it's been a pleasure to be watching uh, this coaching staff for a long time, and uh, and just knowing how we operate in the Big East and kind of what the Big East stood for and, um, and being familiar with the standards of Rutgers and knowing the great academic heritage that is here. Um, and as good as it was, or as good as I thought it was, it exceeded that. My goal is that the athletic teams get as competitive in the Big Ten as the faculty are. If we can bring the athletics up to where the faculty are, we're going to do just fine, and I think the boss will be pleased. Yeah. <laughs> back, back over here. Can you um, describe to us how you convinced the committee without having specific football experience? How did you convince them that you could manage the football program in particular? Well, I manage coaches for a living. And whether it's the rowing coach or the football coach, and I, and I have done managing of, of football. You don't, you're not number two in any athletic department in the country not interfacing with the for-profit sports. And in my case in particular, because of all the areas that serve them, whether it's medicine or sports performance or the student welfare, or student discipline, or that was a list of those areas. I oversee all the areas that service every sport at Louisville. So when, often when there was an issue, it actually fell right to my plate to manage. So I've managed up and over and on, on occasion down with several of the coaches uh, quite a bit. Um, fortunately, the two head coaches we have, and Charlie Strong and Rick Patino, don't require a lot of course correction. In fact, almost none. Those are extraordinary coaches. It's been a privilege to serve them and to be there for them. and provide everything that we can, um, me individually and Tom and I as partners in taking care of all 23 of the sports we have at the University of Louisville. Uh, uh, sort of a follow-up to that. Uh, I think it's widely held perception that, that Tom is one of, if not the best AD in the country. Uh, I think people will see you as a number two and wonder how much of that was your vision and how much of that was, was him. Uh, if you could speak to that, I mean, what, what level of the fundraising did you handle, what level of the facility improvement uh, was, was you doing? Uh, from, from well, I've never known how to talk about that because Tom and I are so connected to the hip. I was talking to somebody, we talk 18 times a day, and I honest, honestly could not tell you where he starts and I start, and where he ends and I, and I end. It's been a privilege to be a part of every single thing that we've done, whether it's fundraising, whether it's opening, or whether it's closing an ask, or whether it's being part of the cultivation of that ask, uh, whether it's you know coach selection or coach management. There's no part of our athletic department that he, from the, begin, from the beginning, now I'm a seasoned administrator, but from the very beginning when I was 33, he made certain I was everywhere I needed to be. Um, when we, we had a, we'd be Florida State in our home field in the pouring rain in the middle of a hurricane, which I didn't know hurricanes could reach a little, but it did. And we had a chance to upset number four Florida State. That night in the suite, that was really the beginning of charting going to the Big East. And I, it was midnight and I was ready to go home. And Tom's like, no, no, come here. You're staying here because the dialogue was gonna happen about what are next, you know, so Tom has always been that way. He not only gave me a seat at the table, but he gives me a seat at his table. So I don't know how to separate out the body of work. Um, I just know I was incredibly blessed to be given the opportunity. He could have selected hundreds of thousands of other administrators to join him on that project. And, uh, and, he, joined, and he selected me and how lucky am I? Okay, uh, two more questions. I think someone right here, uh, next to Steve. <coughs> Um, given that you guys just uh, corrected the Young Center, will that help once you get up to speed on the RAC plans with uh, carrying it through to them? I would think so because the Young Center was a pretty massive project for us. And it was a project not just by the time you're doing design build, but also, you know, all the political parties were involved with that. It was a huge hot potato in our, in our community. But more importantly, you know, I've been designing buildings for us for a long time. We built 
over a quarter of a million dollars of facilities on our campus. And that doesn't include the $253 million Yom Center. So we've been building buildings for 15 years along the way, and I've been on every part from the fundraising end to the actual designing of the building to um, I have a secret love of architecture, and so I've literally on graph paper designed buildings and told people to engineer it, and they've come back, and that's the building we built. So um, I have a particular love of design build and ensuring that when you build something, the magnitude of the buildings that are being built in sports today, that you find a way to make certain that we're going to spend those dollars that it services as many student athletes, as many coaches, and as many constituents as you can to make certain that you're using every dollar wisely. So I'm really looking forward to see how far they are, uh, what, or what the conversations are about the rack and where it's at, and, and ensuring that whatever we do benefits as many people as possible. Okay, in the back. Uh, Cameron Bowen, Rutgers today. Um, as a female in a male-dominated position, um, do you feel like you bring some different skill sets to the job? And can you also talk a little bit about the um, the importance and historical importance of being the first female athletic director at Rutgers? Um, you know, because Tom's such a great advocate, um, I don't even think of athletics as male. I get it is male dominated, but in my building it's not male dominated. In fact, it's probably female dom dominated. We have Tom surrounded. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and, and then on the other hand, I've been a woman in collegiate athletics all my life. I don't know anything different than being around the men that have helped us so for me, it's a really natural uh, opportunity to step into. Um, it's certainly a privilege to be the first anything, you know, on the Rutgers campus. Um, but I just see it as the next opportunity. And I'm very, as I've said, I just feel so privileged that Dr. Barchi gave me this opportunity and am absolutely passionate and urgent and intense and unrelentingly sleepless about making certain we go quick. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much.